I wasted months trying to learn data engineering, as well as a bunch of money on individual courses, subscriptions, Databricks, and Azure as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the top five courses I would recommend to anyone who wants to learn data engineering. So the first one we're gonna look at is Azure. So Azure have a certification called the Microsoft Certified Azure Data Engineer Associate. And essentially it teaches you all the things about data engineering for Azure. Now, the pros of this are of course that it is Microsoft. So it is accredited, it is recognized within industry. Additionally, recognizing industry, big data. So it teaches you big data skills. Skills that are required for jobs such as Azure Data Engineering jobs, which exist. So you can learn this certification to try and get one of those jobs. Now, when you're learning as well, you can follow an actual learning path to get there. So for example, there are a variety of skills that you can follow on learn.microsoft.com. Now, if you come here, for example, you can go and you can prepare for the exam and you can take some practice exams and see videos on how to prepare as well. So proper structured learning path and an accredited real industry recognized certification. Now, what are the cons then? Because that sounds really, really good. Well, there are three major cons. Number one is that the data engineering certification was actually recently canned. Now it was canned in favor of the fabric data engineer. So essentially what's happening is all of the services that you would learn normally on Microsoft. So for example, these ones here, most of them are getting absorbed into fabric. So just beware with any kind of Microsoft or cloud provider that whatever you're learning, they could just can it they don't have to give you an explanation why, but they may can it, so just be careful. The second example is here that for this certification, the questions are multiple choice, like this one here. They're not, here's a project to build or something, it's like a multiple choice question. So you could guess it right, and it just doesn't reinforce that actual learning, it more reinforces memorization. And then the final point is that it doesn't teach you skills like Python, so it doesn't teach you transferable skills really it kind of does but it teaches you proprietary skills so it teaches you these services that azure offer essentially essentially it will teach you how to become an azure data engineer like one of these jobs but it won't just teach you data engineering transferably another one that's kind of similar is databricks so databricks also have a certification the databricks certified data engineer associate which is Pretty much the same thing, but by Databricks because they have their own proprietary platform. Now, there are a bunch of pros here. One is that Databricks is just rising in popularity, right? And here, this doesn't really do it justice, but if you just go on LinkedIn and follow some data engineering guys, everyone's talking about Databricks. It is the place to be. Additionally, they have partnerships with the likes of Azure, AWS, and Google, so they have strong industry recognition. Another pro is that there is a good mix on their learning platform. So if you go to like Learning Library, so it's kind of like learning, learn.microsoft.com, similar type of thing. They do have different, for here we can see, build data and pipelines, data engineering with Databricks. So they have a mixture of theory and hands-on labs that you can do, which is cool. So as you can see here, like lab and lab, whereas this one will just be uh, theory. So as we can see, industry recognized, a good mix. However, what are the cons? Well, the first con is that it is expensive. So there are paid subscription models to the learning. It's not just free self-paced learning, but additionally, Databricks as a platform is pretty pricey as well. Now, as for the questions it's the same as microsoft where they do have just like a multiple choice format so it really does the certification itself really does emphasize just knowing the platform as opposed to you know being a data engineer as such and then thirdly exact same as azure where you don't learn like the fundamentals of data engineering you just learn how to use databricks and what databricks offers as a proprietary platform um, as you can see in this example here, I thought it was funny. There were so many Databricks uh, nodes. Um, but Microsoft 
Azure because you can use Databricks on Azure. That's where actually I raked up most of my bills when I was uh, learning data engineering. But here, if you want to learn big data in Spark and you want to, you know, be at what people are using in the industry, if you want to know it, but you already have a solid foundation, then learn Databricks. And so by this point, I've spent so much time and money learning Azure, learning Databricks, because these platforms are not free. Cloud usage is not free. And so what do I know by the end of it? I just know how to use Databricks on Azure. And I kind of know the fundamentals, but only as they teach it. If someone was to give me a real world question, I wouldn't really know how to solve it. For example, I wanted to build a dashboard for my YouTube stats and for other stuff to pull in. But I don't really know where to start. I don't even really know at this point what a schema is. And this is where DataCamp come in. So on DataCamp, there's a good course called Data Engineer in Python. And it'll teach you everything you need to know from the ground up. And additionally, to cover that cloud need, they are partnered with Microsoft. So you get 50% off Microsoft exams. So that's cool to cover. So the pros of it are that it's project based. For example, one of their main projects in the data engineering Python is building a retail data pipeline where you can analyze e-com data, which is cool. They have a structured learning path. So you learn from SQL right through to Python every step of the way, which is exactly what you need when you're trying to learn the fundamentals. Now, not only is it the fundamentals, it's a comprehensive structured learning path where you will learn about the cloud, you will learn about Python, you'll learn about EATL and ELT as well as an introduction to Apache Airflow and other tools which are used widely in industry. Now, on top of all this, it is a one subscription for all courses. So for example, if you're interested in cloud and software development and data engineering, maybe even in applied finance and ML, you can buy this one subscription and you're covered for the whole thing. And not only that, but there is a certification available. So if you do the data engineer in Python, you can get industry certified and this isn't just a course certificate like you would get on Udemy or Coursera this is an actual certification that is industry recognized and remember as well you do also then get your 50% off for Microsoft exams now as for cons I could only think of one which is the fact that it is self-study which means that you have to learn and do it at your own pace but that's why they have projects and theory and learning where you can use the console inside of data camp so inside actually on the platform you can use their terminal etc because then it isn't like just sitting down and be like right which lecture will i watch today you're actually getting that hands-on experience which i find is the key to self-directed and self-paced learning so if you want to learn real data engineering instead of just memorizing questions like for databricks or azure I strongly recommend DataCamp and I wish that I had done it sooner because it is for me the best option. So if you want to skip the frustration and learn data engineering the right way, go to DataCamp, check out the link in the description of this video below. Now, let's check out Coursera. So on Coursera, the course we're going to focus on, because Coursera has a bunch of courses, is Data Engineering Foundations Specialization. That's a mouthful. But the pros of this are that it is offered by IBM. And on Coursera, there's a bunch of different courses and some of them are Harvard, some of them are Google. And it is a pro because you're gonna learn directly from the experts. Although sometimes I think that can be a bit kind of misleading because then people think that they're learning from Harvard, but you know, it is offered by people who know their stuff. That's the kind of main thing I'm trying to say. Now, secondly, it covers comprehensively everything you need to know. So, introduction to data engineering, Python, relational databases, SQL, etc. So, it is comprehensive in its coverage. And to be fair, it is relatively affordable, considering you're going to be learning skills which can boost your career earnings by, like, if you're in a normal job in the UK, you could pretty much, like, double your, your earnings in a couple of years if you go and learn this. So, you know, relative to that idea, it's not actually that expensive. It's actually pretty cheap. But the problem with Coursera is that it's just a bunch of theory. So there is no way to like get hands-on and practical, like the way that I like to work, as you'll know in the channel, that you end up, you have like, it's just all theory. It's just like watching lectures, which, which I'm, I'm not uh, a fan of. 
Additionally, it does take months to complete, so like the way they recommend it. And 10 hours a week, I mean, that's quite a lot. Two hours a day, five days a week, and it will still take you two months just to finish this course. And then finally as well, no certificate, no certification. You just get like a, a shareable, I've completed this, that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. Um, but that just means that anyone could do it. So you could just buy it or, you know, get the free trial and pretend you've done it and then add it to LinkedIn. So not very... Not very helpful. All that said, it is good for concepts. So sometimes, like, if I want to learn something that's more artsy, so, like, <laughs> by artsy, I mean the arts, like uh, management or leadership or how to learn. Learning how to learn was a good course that I've done on Coursera. Coursera is really good for that, for the theory, but for the hands-on kind of engineering stuff, it's just not not my favourite, but it can be, can be decent. Now, the fifth and final one is Udemy. Specifically, let me open it up here, data engineering for beginners, so you can learn Python, SQL, and Spark. It's one of the top selling courses on data engineering. So the pros for this here are, number one, it actually is pretty affordable. But the reason it's affordable is because generally you're buying one course. So like that course here I was showing you is 15 quid. Normally it's 60, which is crazy, but uh, 15 pounds. But the problem with that is then, you know, that you're buying it and then you only have that one, So, which we'll get into in the cons. But you can also buy a subscription. Quite a few people will have this at work, which again, it comes with more cons, which is that like there's a bunch of instructors and stuff, which we'll get to. But generally on the pricing front, they're actually pretty decent. As for the course content, again, they are pretty comprehensive because people sell them as individual courses. But again, people do often as well, though, pad out the courses. So like 55 hours. Sometimes people do, you know, uh, pad them out just so that it sounds a bit better than it actually is. And then finally, is that often it is project-based learning. So like if we go to Udemy here and go to projects, you see that it's with hands-on projects. We scroll down. Da, da, da. What a nightmare! Try to use this website, but um, <laughs> and some projects. But it can be good. The course the website is a bit clunky though. So the pros are affordable, comprehensive, and it has hands-on projects, which is cool. Although you have to run them on your computer, but it, there are tutorials for them. Now, what are the cons? I suppose I've already alluded to the fact that I'm not. A massive fan of Udemy, but it's still good uh, nonetheless. Which is number one instructors. So if we scroll or zoom in here, you can see that these instructors are different from these instructors, which are different from these, from these. So every course that you find on Udemy could have different instructors. Now there will be like standout um, instructors. For example, this guy here, um, Durga. He he does a bunch of the data engineering ones, but it's not just him, and sometimes you'll find ones you like, sometimes you'll find ones you don't, so it can be a bit risky doing that. Secondly, you don't get a certification, so if you've done it, you can say on your resume or to someone that you've done it, but you don't get any accreditation. And then thirdly and finally, they aren't always up to date. So for example, here I found a data engineering using AWS, because I know Azure, but I don't really know much about AWS in regards to data engineering, although I have been an AWS cloud consultant um, for a client, but Data engineering, I don't know much, and it, but I do suspect that AWS, with the rate of change that they generally do, that the last update being November 2024 is probably something uh, not good, considering it is now March, so it'll be like four months possibly out of date, which then is the con, is that often because of the nature of these courses, they can often be out of date or outdated because um, it's dependent on the specific course instructor updating them as opposed to the platform itself. So that is the top five that I would recommend. But if you want to learn data engineering the right way, I strongly, strongly suggest DataCamp. Skip months of wasted effort. It is hands down the best option. It's structured hands-on and teaches you the real-world skills you need from day one. If you want to get started, click the first link in the description below. Anyway, until next time, I will see you later. Take care, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.